This is Chromar with TGN, welcoming you to the World of Warcraft Cataclysm beta video. Today we are uh, going over the add-on dot timer. Um, I got a bunch of requests to go over this add-on. You've seen it in my videos, my uh, Warlock and on Warrior DPS videos, and some of my other miscellaneous videos here and there. So I want to show how to configure this thing because it's very counterintuitive. Um, the first thing you'll notice, uh, I have all those things set to default. So let's say I drop a curse on something, it pops up these this really crappy um, UI. Let me use a haunt because it has a cooldown. And you get a separate thing for your um, for your debuff duration and your cooldown. This is all the default stuff. This is the default stuff. So uh, let me right click and get rid of this because this looks ugly. So that looks horrible and it's basically completely useless. You're never going to be able to use that because it's too tiny and um, graphically not very satisfying at all. So let's go in our interface add-ons. First thing you want to do is click on, you want to expand all these little buttons here. Click on your dot timer. Turn off simple mode. Uh, simple mode, it just sucks. Uh, you can't do anything here. So I'm going to turn off simple mode. Now it shows my default profile. I'm going to create a new profile. I'm going to call it test. And hit enter. I'm going to make this a default. Now this is a pre-made I just slapped together for this test. I didn't want to use one of my other characters because I didn't want to screw up their settings. So that's why there's no spells here. And I'm not even glyphed or jammed or anything. Okay, now the way this dot timer works, in short, is that you have three different kinds of timers. Uh, dot timers, cooldowns, and player ar player auras, which are like self buffs. And then you also have another category called notifications, which is a little special. It's not a timer, it's just a thing that pops up on your screen. So what I wanna do is, uh, first I wanna start configuring my profile. Um, the, your, your dot timers are made up of timers and anchors. Anchors are like a group, like a box that you put your timers in and your timers uh, configure how they look, okay? So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is worry about the look and feel and then start worrying about the individual spells last. You actually can figure the spells up in here, up, up in this section, which is kind of odd. You think you would do it in the timers, but it's not very intuitive. That's why this video is necessary. So we're going to start with dot timer because this is the one you're going to be using the most. At least this is the one I found to be the most useful one. It's the main reason I got this buff, or I got this uh, add-on. And I wound up finding a use for the other ones as well just because they're uh, pretty powerful. So we're going to go to the anchor. Now there's tons of options here for your dot timer anchor um, anytime you see a, a little checkbox in this like let's say I, I click off interactive a little checkbox appears here what this means is whether or not it's a default if there's a check in here if then it means you've changed it you've customized it that way if you want to restore a default setting like I change the name scale I'm like ah never mind I want to restore default you just uncheck the box and it fixes it okay um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna mess with some of my settings here not too many uh, first one thing I'm going to sort timers. It sorts by time remaining, which means they're constantly going to be changing what order they're in. I'm just going to sort by alphabetical so they stay the same. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the spacing here, and I'm going to take away the spacing because I want the, the timers to take up as, as little room as humanly possible. So let's take the spacing down to zero. And most of the other anchor things are the same. If there's a couple I'm forgetting, I'll come back to them. But let's anyway, let's switch down to the timer. This is where it gets more more difficult. On your basis timing center set setting, what this means is you can have it so that all your defaults, instead of referring to the normal default, refers to a different timer. We're going to do that, but we're not going to do it for dot timer. We're going to set up dot timer a certain way, and then we're going to take player R's and match it to dot timer. And I'll show you that in a minute. So let's look at our format here. You can either a bar or an icon. This is bar mode. And this is icon mode. You already get out of here, fell, fell armor. See how crappy this is? Anyway, so this is uh, time, This is icon mode. It takes up a lot less room, but you don't get the handy uh, the handy uh, bar. So I like bar mode a lot better, and I've, I've used it both ways. So let's go back to default here. Clickable, uh, this allows you to right-click it and get rid of it. Um, however, tooltips is very obnoxious because while you're trying to raid, it's going to have tooltips popping up all your screen. So I turn that off. Um, ghost duration, this is really, really important. Uh, what happens is when your timer runs out, it goes into what's called ghost mode, which means that the timer's run out, and it's kind of like warning you that it's run out. Um, what ghost duration means is it only warns you for three seconds, and then it'll disappear. Well, screw that. Um, by setting it to zero, it'll stay up forever. Uh, or you can set it to 15, and it'll drop off after 15 seconds. There's no option to just make it stay until you run out of, go out of combat, which is stupid. Uh, instead, what this does is it may stay as a ghost until all the timers are ghosts. So as long as, none of, as, long as all your debuffs, at least one debuff stays up, your, your timers will stay up on the screen. Now fade out, I just add an extra 5 seconds just to make it last as long as humanly possible. Fade in, I put it at 0 because I don't want it to fade in, I want it to appear immediately. 
Now for your scale, I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale to maximum. I just want it to be bigger and more visible. Uh, red, okay, red point. I'll get to that in a second. Let's take a look at um, your, your colors here. It starts at green, and then it goes to yellow when it's getting close. Then it goes to red when it's final, then blue when it's in ghost. Now I'm going to change this because I want red to be the ghost. This thing that says final, this is red point. So what I'm going to do is change the timer so that it turns pink at one second. So what that does is if I see it turn pink, that means I know, oh crap, I need to refresh it. If I see it turn red, that means, oh crap, it's already too late. Now you can set your red point to whatever you want. I really wish it would actually display what you typed here, but you know that's just another problem with the add-on. Now as far as these uh, icon settings here, now this is for your, if you do icon version, I do bar version, so I skip that. Going down to bar version, uh, for your timer, I'm going to leave most of these default. However, I'm going to change some of the size here. Um, I mainly want to change, like, let's see here. Where's my preview button? Here's my preview button. The still are huge. Uh, that's not going to be much good. So for major length, sets the width when horizontal and height when vertical. So uh, this is too long. So I'm going to shrink down. I want, the, I want it to be as compact as possible. For minor length, I am going to increase this slightly to give it more width to make it more visible. Yeah, let's do a small font so it's actually readable. And that looks pretty good. Now I did forget something on my anchor. Timer setting. I gotta set my timer. So I gotta link uh, dot timer timer to dot timer anchor. See, this is so complicated, even I'm forgetting how to do it. I just did this like yesterday for a new prebate. Anyway, so now that I've set so that the anchor actually points to the timer, see how it looks all compact now? Group names. I'm just gonna uncheck these. Now we're talking. So this is how it's going to look, and as you add more, it stacks up, and then when they run out, um, it's going to, uh, they're not going to drop off. Now there's still one more problem. Uh, notice it's going to do every dot I do, including Drain Life, which is pretty useless, and every debuff I do, including um, Curse of Elements, things like that. I mean, you know, it, it's up to you to determine what you want to actually put on there, but I wouldn't put Curse of Elements. Notice how my corruption is ticking down. These aren't disappearing yet uh, because of my ghost settings, but anyway. So now I'm going to show you how to put, how to actually choose what spells show up on your dot timer. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and I'm going to click this button called whitelist. Now, um, you see where it says block timers. What this happens is you can type, you can actually type in the name of a timer to or eliminate it from the list. But in, by clicking whitelist, it does the opposite. It changes a block timer to visible timer. So with whitelist on, by default, nothing shows up. You have to type in what you want. So let me type some in. I'm going to type in Corruption and Bane of Agony. It's very hard to type with uh, the way my mic is positioned here. Now only Corruption and Bane of Agony should show up. Bane of Agony. Let's do a haunt and it won't show up. Of course, for the record, when I actually, uh, in my video, I, I, I do, of course, make Haunt show up. I just want to show you that it, how to configure it. But now Drain Life um, does not show up because it's on the list. Only Bane of Agony and Corruption are. So uh, what I would do is set up, uh, you can, I mean, you can have do it however you want, of course. It's your, your option. But the way I do it is I set up Stable Affliction, Haunt, uh, not Drain Life. I set up Corruption, Bane of Agony, and Bane of Doom in case I use that for other specs. I also set up this uh, this talent, Shadow and Flame, which is like your improved Scorch, and uh, it's only, uh, you know, you use this if there's no there's no mage putting improved Scorch on the target. And you can use whatever you, whatever debuffs that you place on the boss and you think, well, it would be nice if there was a timer to warn me it's about to run out, you can put that on there and adapt that for your class. Alright, so that's um, how I did dot timers. Now let me just show you how to how to connect player R's and do the pretty much the same thing. Oh, there's one more thing. I'm sorry. There's one more thing. Um, this is so annoying. I have to I have to show you this. Oh, stop missing. I'm not I'm not gemmed. All right. So it, I have currently have an announcement set on. What happens is I click on this and it says my bane of agony will expire. This is so obnoxious because you're going to be clicking on this crap all the time on accident while you're raiding. So don't keep an, uh, announcements on. You'll be annoying your raid members to death. And yes, it will do it in raid. And if you're a raid leader and you just type in raid warning last, it will do it in raid warning. And people will be like, what are you t doing? So no, just turn it off. Turn it off. So anyway, sorry about that. Moving on to player R's, I'm going to turn it off. Now there's something I want to show you. Um, notice how I have cast fell armor, but I don't have a fell armor icon. It's because Blizzard 
Blizzard buffs, excuse me, is turned off. So I'm going to hit turn it on, but it doesn't appear. What's wrong? Is it a bug? Yes, it's a bug. Uh, if you turn on Blizzard buffs, when it's been off, it doesn't work. You have to do a reload UI. Why it's a Burning Crusade um, screen, I have no idea. But anyway, so then it shows up and it still looks screwed up, so you have to recast it, then it fixes it. And this bug was maddening to me when I first tried to mess with this cooldown with this timer. Oh, look at that. What the heck? It just disappeared again. Oh, there it goes. I don't know. I'm not sure why it disappeared, but that was interesting. So, um, let's go back to our add-ons here. It looks like because I right-clicked on it, it disappeared. That's, that's weird. So, um... We're going to be doing the same thing with our whitelist here. I don't want to show any of my buffs except, and my timer, except for improved soul fire. So let's look at that. So by default, it looks really crappy. But we're going to fix that real fast. Watch this. This is the only thing about the configuration for the UI that I think is cool. I go to player R's timer, which is handles your self buffs. Change it to change the basis timer setting to dot timer, and now it automatically changes the settings for the timer. Now you can't do that with anchors. You have to configure each anchor separately. So I have to go over here, say tire timer settings player Aura. Uh, leave everything else. What do I got to do? Turn off the group names. I need to do this every time. Okay, group sorts already set. I guess I forgot to. Um, no, I'm going to turn it on. I don't want group sort. I want to turn this to alphabetical. Timer direction. Okay, this was... No, this one stays the same. Uh, group spacing. Turn it. Get rid of those. That's annoying. Okay. Now let's put, our, let's put a couple of timers up. You can take that improved soul fire dragger right here. I put it right on top so it blends in. So my buffs and debuffs are essentially all in one. And then when my improved soul fire runs out and I see it, it's uh, yellow, I'm like, oh, I better I better get this done. Oh, it's about to turn pink. Then I go ahead and uh, queue up my next soul fire to uh, refresh it. Okay, I'm going to go to player R's timer and this ghost duration. Instead of setting it, uh, because I'm only going to have one buff up at once, uh, setting it to zero doesn't help me any. Because keep in mind it says staying at zero means it'll stay as a ghost until all timers in this group are also ghosts. Well, those timers and dot timer are not in the same group. Player R is a separate group. So I'm going to have to turn this up to 15. So this way it'll at least stay up for 15 plus 5 seconds. So I've got 20 seconds to notice that my soul fire has dropped off and refresh it. It's kind of my failure if, it, if I need more than 20 seconds. But it is a little annoying that I can't just make it stay until it runs out of combat. That's just one of the many pet peeves I have about this, uh, this add-on. All right, so player R's timer is essentially configured. Uh, so that's ready to go. So that was quick. That was an easy one. Now cooldowns, we're going to do, I'm just going to show you one quick cooldown. I'm going to go to my cooldown. I'm going to turn off announcing as usual. I'm going to turn on my whitelist, my visible timer. I'm just going to show Demon Soul. I also recommend putting Berserking in there, uh, Metamorphosis, any major cooldowns, and any spells that you need to cast off cooldown that you have to cast right away, like Conflagrate or um, or uh, what's a great example, uh, Hand of Gul'dan, and of course, there, you know, within every other class, there's a million examples like uh, Shockwave or something or or Shield Slam. So whatever floats your boat, whatever you say, well, I really wish there was an indicator to warn me when my spells off cooldown. Then this this was very useful. So I'm going to show you how to do the vertical ones here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go down to my cooldowns timer. I'm going to use dot timer as my basis again, so it sets most of the stuff for me. But now I don't want it to be horizontal. This is go back to what I was mentioning before about wanting it to be vertical. And then I'm going to go to my cooldowns anchor, timer setting, cooldowns timer. That's good. Turn off names. Those are obnoxious. Timer sort is going to be alphabetical. Timer direction is going to be to the right. So every time I add a new, tiger, new timer, and let me show you why I'm doing that, by the way. If I look at it now, for preview, it just makes them all vertical. That's that's really obnoxious. So we're going to set it to the right, and that way it spawns over to the right. So I know that was quick, but that should be enough. So we're going to do Corruption or Bane of Agony. You can improve Soul Fire up. And then hit Demon Soul. There you go. Let's move him out of the way here. 
And you can put your little bar wherever you want. It's going to shrink down. And let me... Oh, one more thing. I like it set on grow more than shrink. If you go to cooldown timers right here, there's an option for grow. So instead of um, starting at full and going down, it starts at empty and goes up. I mean, that makes more sense for me for a cooldown, at least visually. So I have my cooldowns over here, my buff over here, and then right underneath them, my dot timer. And I try to put them together so that they're more more, more or less indistinguishable. So uh, you can use that for any cooldown you have. Um, and, you know, just not, not, not just long cooldowns, but short ones as well. So it's actually a really, really good add-on that I, I've used a great deal. It's very, it's you know, frustrating to use, but if you get used to it, it's totally worth it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this was Chromar with TGN. As always, asking you to please rate, please comment, and please subscribe.